Hi, everyone. Welcome to another financial analysis video with myself, Moe Damin, and my colleague, Ted Wainman. Uh, we are looking at uh, an interesting company today that's just floated on the UK Stock Exchange. Before we dive into this business, um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you are interested in a company, whether you're thinking about investing in them or selling to them or doing business with them in some way, shape or form, do leave a note in the comment section giving us your request for that particular company and we will get round to it. So let's get started with this company. Company today is Podpoint and uh, continuing the theme of the electronic vehicle uh, connected businesses that we've done in the past like Tesla and Rivian. Uh, this company is a UK based company and what they do is they provide uh, electric vehicle charging equipment and points. Um, and uh, they've just re recently floated on the London Stock Exchange, which we'll come on to. Um, but what's interesting about this company is that they have about 50 to 60 percent. I think it's more like the 50 percent market share in the UK for home electronic vehicle charging points. So they command quite a sizable portion of the industry in the UK. Uh, and we're gonna dive into the finances. You may not, you won't see that reflected in the finances, of course, but you will see how to analyze those numbers for any future statements that they publish. Um, the other thing to note about this business, about 50% of this business is owned by a, a large French energy business uh, called EDF. Um, so, so they have quite, quite a sizable and well-known and large institutional backing from businesses. Um, and they, when they floated on stock exchange, they floated at 225 pence per share, um, which means they raised about 100 million pounds at, uh, at the IPO. And at IPO, that meant that they were valued at 352 million pounds. Now, it's fluctuated since then. Uh, so stick around. We'll come on to that later on. If you'd invested in this company when it first, when it actually IPO'd, you'd be sitting on a sizable profit and you'd be pretty happy. But we'll come on to that uh, later on. So Ted, let's take it away. Let's share what we found about this company and its finances and you know, help our viewers uh, better analyze the financial statements of a company like this or anyone else uh, in the future. Absolutely. So good to see you, Moe. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so we're going to look at their financial statements. Now, um, you know, trying to find their financial statements is actually quite challenging. There's nothing on their website um, and if you go to company's house, um, what you've got is kind of holding companies which have kind of all been reversing back and uh, forth into each other. So uh, we're going to use the numbers which are provided in the prospectus. And this is on their website. So if you look on their website, you'll have the prospectus just before they floated. Um, and if you look in the, uh, the, uh, the list of contents, you'll notice that it gives you some historical information on page 100. So that's what we're going to use uh, for today's financial analysis. We're going to whiz down to page 100 uh, and see what it is telling us. So here we go um, uh, to page 100 or, or there or thereabouts. Um, and what we have is the income statement. Now you'll notice here that they are giving you the six months ended June uh, and comparing that to the six months ended June for 2020. Um, and then they've also got each of the three years. So you can kind of see that the full year ended 20, full year ended 19, and the full year ended um, uh, 18. And so I'm going to focus on uh, this uh, column here, the kind of the, 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 the full year. Um, but you might want to kind of look, keep an eye on this number and think, well, for example, they made 33,000, 000, so 33 million uh, sales um, in 2020. Uh, and if the first six months is anything to go by. They're on 26 so far. If they double that, if they do 26 for the first six months, they should be able to do 26 for the second six months. That puts them on 52 million, which is a pretty substantial increase. So uh, you can start to kind of get a feel for the kind of the growth factor that's going on um, with this business. Um, it's uh, the gross margin. Um, uh, they are operating at a gross uh, a cost of sales is 75%. So the gross margin is about 25%. That's uh, the gross profit expresses a percentage of sales. Um, now, I'm not sure exactly what's in that cost of sales. So, you know, I would guess 
that that's going to be the cost to them of the electricity. So they're going to buy the electricity and then provide the electricity uh, and then and then and then sell that electricity. So that's what I'm guessing the cost of sales in. So 25 percent, uh, a 25 percent uplift looks pretty, uh, pretty damn good to me. Um, you can see the administrative expenses. Now, the administrative expenses, you're starting to see um, the business, uh, you know, you if you double if you uh, if, well, if you halve twenty, you get to ten. If you double thirteen, you only get to twenty six. So you can start to see as a proportion that the the uh, the overheads are starting to come down, which means that they are starting to move towards profitability. Now they're not there yet, um, but they're starting to kind of you know they're starting to move towards um, uh, some form of break even. That kind of seems to be on the horizon. Um, there's quite a lot going on further down and, 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 and quite a little bit of um, uh, 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 so, so shenanigans going on. Well, not shenanigans, but um, what I will just identify is, is this number here. So this is a, a significant one. It's an exceptional item. And we usually says go and have a look at note number nine. Um, that exceptional item, I'm always a little bit skeptical about ex exceptional items because they seem to happen on a very regular basis. Um, but this one in particular um, is is I, I have to admit I haven't quite got my head round exactly what it relates to. But you'll see down at the bottom it says note number two. It talks about transaction costs and other exceptional costs, uh, and it says go and have a look at note nine, uh, and you can also have a look in note B. And if you look in note nine, it's all about an acquisition. So in effect, what happened was that. Um, there was a kind of a company was set up and then used that to buy the original uh, Podpoint Holdings. So Podpoint Group was set up and then bought Podpoint Holdings. Uh, and, you know, there, there's costs involved in that. And, and, you know, without getting into kind of too much, you know, we can follow this spaghetti through, but I'm not sure it's really going to give us uh, a much more uh, information about the underlying performance uh, of the business. Suffice to say that the company, you know, that that is a one off. Um, uh, and I think that that one off cost uh, is driving a lot of this, uh, a lot of this loss here. Um, and what we can see is that if we take the six months, we notice that it is becoming less loss making. It's marching towards profitability. Uh, and it looks to me like there's a kind of, you know, a profitability break even is on the horizon, not far away, as long as they keep uh, their costs under control. So there's our income statement. If we look at the balance sheet, you'll notice um, the balance sheet has um, uh, significantly uh, uh, increased in terms of the size of the balance sheet. So there's the balance sheet the, at the end of the um, uh, the end of the the period. And um, again, you know this 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 goodwill here. This is the kind of the goodwill on the acquisition. So this is you know we set up a company, we then use that company to buy an existing company. Uh, and it it buys the the uh, you know effectively it's almost like capitalizing its own net assets. So in effect, this is the underlying company that was bought. Um, you know, and what they paid for it about eighty five um, a million. Okay, and the kind of the difference is then stuck into into goodwill. So that's almost uh, again a little bit of a kind. Of, you know, you 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 can't you know it doesn't physically exist. You can't put that on eBay and sell it, for example. So it's kind of reflecting the value of the company just before it went through its IPO. A bit of kind of restructuring going on there. Um, looking at the, uh, the, the the current assets, the current assets are looking, you know, so this is, there's a little bit of window dressing going on in here. You know, this kind of, this, this you know, you, you suddenly think, oh, wow, look, you know, the non-current assets have increased significantly. Well, they haven't really, you know, you look at the property plant and equipment. I mean, it has increased, but but not dramatically. It, it's mainly around this goodwill and these intangible assets. That's really where the, you know, which I think is, is a, again, a little bit of an accounting, um, uh, uh, you know, window dressing, if that makes sense. Um, trade and other receivables are up. Um, uh, current assets have gone up. Um, but, you know, nothing, nothing really to kind of write home about, I don't think. Um, current liabilities, so the liquidity ratio is still looking pretty good. So uh, we're comparing um, uh, uh, the current assets with the current liabilities. Um, you'll notice that there's some debt sitting on the balance sheet. It's, it's come down. Uh, that you know the debt has actually come down. Um, there's not a lot in terms of kind of you know short-term debt, so it's, it is long-term debt, um, uh, and, and they are you know they're paying interest on that debt. Um, and then we come into the equity, and again, it's kind of this. There's 
you know, this this change here going from a, a 25 million loss to a 72 million retained earnings, you know, yet they make a loss in the period. You kind of scratch your head and think, well, what's going on here? And again, this is this 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 account, the way they've accounted for this this kind of reverse acquisition. So in effect, what they do is they they set up a shell company. They use that shell company to buy the original company, and then they and then they so it's no longer a shell company. And then they float the shell company rather than the original company. And it's just you know it, it's almost like a SPAC, but it isn't. It's like a SPAC, but not in the in the order that you would expect. So it just looks to me like there's kind of window dressing going on here. Uh, and effectively, what they've done is that they kind of they've realized the value of the company in its own balance sheet, if that makes sense. So it, it's, it's, it's quite hard to get your head round. Um, uh, we need to be careful that we don't suddenly look at these two numbers and say, oh, wow, it's really, you know, it's really improved. It, it's still the same business. It hasn't really changed. Um, and I think that's an important thing to drill home that, you know, this, you know, this 72 million, this is not retained earnings. This is not, you know, the company's been making profits and hasn't paid it out as a dividend. And I think that that is, that is, it, it, it's, 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 it, it's window dressing. It's, yeah, anyway, it, it's, uh, we need to be very careful when we read these, read, read these numbers. So um, that's the balance sheet. Um, if we look at the, the, the cash flow so it's so again you can look at this retained uh, the the um the, the the accumulated retained earnings um so this is kind of where we see it so here's the loss at the beginning of the year that's the total loss they've made ever since they started trading um and then suddenly you notice that the loss on the 28th of january just goes to zero okay and it's kind of like you know it, it gets wiped out and then replaced with what they call this capital contribution, which is part of this kind of this reverse takeover, so to speak. Uh, and suddenly they end up with retained earnings of 72 uh, million. And you just kind of go, well, that, you know, that just, you know, it, it isn't retained earnings. It, I, I don't know quite how or why they've managed to kind of put that in. You know, in effect, what they've got is a they got a formally waived loan. So they had a loan. Uh, which was 85 million, the people said, oh, you don't have to pay it back. So they said, great, we can recognize that as a profit because, you know, effectively I've borrowed the money, but I don't have to pay it back. So it's a bit like you borrowing a million pounds, buying a million pound house, and then the bank phone you up and say, you know what, don't you worry about it. You're suddenly like, wow, I've just made a million pounds. That's kind of what's going on here. Uh, but you know, you know, as well as I do, that that is not earnings in, in the sense that, you know, it's not like a salary where I've had to work for it. So again, there's a kind of there's an accounting anomaly going on here, which is just a little bit strange. So, you know, perfectly legal, I'm sure, because the auditors have signed it off. Um, but it's not really these numbers are not really reflecting on um, the underlying reality. Um, here we have the uh, the 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 cash flows um, for the business. Um, so they are making uh, a, a, a loss. Um, and they are actually generating, um, uh, uh, they're making a cash loss as well. So there's a cash burn going on. Here's the cash burn. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, sort of six, uh, six million, uh, 7.6 million for the, for the six months last year, uh, 5 uh, million for the six months um, of this year, for example. So, you know, cash burn, profitability, or, or, or rather the loss making is coming down. Uh, they are starting to, you know, reduce their cash burn, but they are still burning cash. You'll notice that they've got, you know, cash uh, in the bank at the end of the year, uh, 1.6 um, uh, uh, million. So, you know, they are, you know, they are, they're still burning cash um, and they need to make sure that, you know, they're not going to effectively run out of cash. So don't forget, this is all pre-IPO. So, you know, as a result of the IPO, they would have raised a whole lot more money. They'll have a lot of money sitting in the bank. Um, I don't know exactly how much they've actually got, but it'd be interesting to see um, the, uh, the next set of results, um, which shows the effect of that IPO. Uh, and that will then give us, we'll be able to determine the cushion as to how long they can continue to burn cash for before they have to go back and tap the shareholders or whether they are actually going to make uh, get to um, a positive break even on their cash. So again, we've got this kind of, you know, uh, the, these anomalies. So if we look at, you know, there, there's our kind of the, the acquisition of subsidiaries, um, 
you know, which is again that kind of that that takeover, uh, and then the, the borrowings forgiven. So again, you've got some big numbers uh, coming in here, which I think you know again are just you know somewhat distorted. We kind of need to you know really kind of read it, just strike these numbers through uh, and look at the underlying numbers, and we can kind of see that you know these guys, you know, there's a little bit of investing going on. Uh, you, you'll notice that they've taken out some loans. They've got some uh, some some additional debt on the balance sheet. Um, uh, and, 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 and that's been, you know, that's what they were doing um, it, uh, uh, at the end of last year as well. Um, so some total for their cash flow is uh, that, you know, they, 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 they generated cash mainly by uh, uh, taking on loans. Um, uh, they've raised more cash through their IPO. They'll probably be sitting on quite a lot of cash, um, but they they basically just boosted up their balance sheet to make it look a lot nicer than maybe it is. So they took a, a balance sheet which was, you know, fairly weak looking. Uh, they've reversed it into a shell to kind of, you know, effectively um, uh, recognize the goodwill inherent in the business and then taken that subsequent company and floated it and said, look at our company, it's got a bigger balance sheet. So, you know, we, we just need to be careful uh, about the difference in the sizes of those balance sheets. Um, you know, I'd almost be tempted to say, look at the year ended December the 31st, 2020, because that's really the company you're buying. But let's go back to that balance sheet and just re-emphasize that, that point. So in effect, uh, what this company have done is they have taken, uh, uh, they've taken effectively nothing up here. They've created a lot up here. And the other side of that is um, the other side of that asset is to effectively show it um, uh, in the um, uh, in, in the equity um, down the bottom. So they've taken a, a, an equity balance sheet which was about uh, seven million and turned it into a kind of a ninety-two uh, million. Even so, they're floating. You know, three hundred and uh, I think I, I looked today. Uh, the, you know, the the um, the the share price um, you know has, has been you know has been has been increasing. Um, as you said, they, you, you would have made some money on the um, uh, if you'd invested at that flotation. There, there it is. Um, it's pretty old, so there's not a huge amount of trading history. Interesting enough, I couldn't quite work out why it's not given me a market cap on this um, a particular website, but you know it didn't. But you know, looking it up, it was about 375 million, something like that. So 375 million on a balance sheet of let's just remind ourselves on a balance sheet of 92 million is you know you're, you're paying you know o, o, over the odds for it um uh, you know uh, what well, i say over the odds you're paying above book value um but if you were to pay 375 million on a seven million pound balance sheet then you'd be thinking oh wow hold on a sec you know really that is all goodwill so in effect what you're doing is you're paying for goodwill on top of goodwill there's already goodwill in there because of the way they structure this flotation so you know, I kind of, you know, I, I look at, you know, to me, that's kind of, you know, that's an alarm bell that, you know, there's a lot of window dressing going on. It, it looks very nice, um, but underlying, I'm kind of, I'm not convinced by the way that they put those numbers together. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to paint too rosy a picture. Uh, and, and therefore, I think that, you know, certainly, you know, they and I may be wrong. Maybe they're going to dominate the whole of the UK and then go into Europe and the world and and you know and do charging points everywhere. Um, but you know it, it it's 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 an expensive company today. So um, uh, because A is expensive uh, and B because of the way they presented those figures, um, it's not something that really you know appeals to me. I'd rather have a a company that produces honest figures. Let's say. Yeah, no doubt, whatever everyone's point of view is, that was certainly an interesting find about this company. Uh, and definitely we've helped our viewers become smarter in uh, reading financial statements from just that one point. Um, but don't forget, you know, we are looking at backwards producing numbers. There's obviously looks like a, a credible and potential growth from this business, particularly if it commands such a large market share. And if you think about electronic vehicle um, manufacturing and the growth of that and the growth of use of that, there's certainly a story there to actually keep a close eye on. 
So great analysis of, of this company. Love to hear everyone else's thoughts on this. If you're in the industry, if you know something very, very deeply about this business, do leave a note in the comment section. This is a community at the end of the day. And of course, like, share, subscribe. A lot of people ask us, how can they, how can they help us? How can they help us get the word out a lot more so that people are more educated financially? Well, you can do so by sharing and by leaving a note in the comment section and certainly liking our video. So until the next video, thank you from myself and Ted Wayman. We'll see you on the next show. See you later, Moe. Good, good to catch up with you.